I'm in the process of moving right now and I had no intentions of really making a video until I had all my recording equipment and here I am. About a month ago I posted a YouTube short just talking about 3i Atlas uh, that was like a new interstellar object. Essentially the object was just a new interstellar object. Uh, the third one, 3i, stands for th the third interstellar object detected by the Atlas telescope in Chile. Is it a comet? Is it an alien spacecraft? The discussion is on about a mysterious object called 31 Atlas that is racing through our solar system. You know, when I posted that video, I just, uh, I thought I was done with it. I thought it was just a cool little, uh, cool little detection. And maybe we'll get some scientific papers out of it in the next few years. Yeah, that's, that's not, that's not necessarily what's happening right now. Did you hear about the hostile alien probe that's heading towards Earth from the direction of a very interesting and biblically significant constellation? Of course you have. So I looked more into this interstellar object that could possibly be an alien threat according to a Harvard professor. Apparently that study that had been done was by a Harvard professor. Remember how I told you guys that I had a dream that I believed was a vision that this object was cylindrical. Now the Harvard professor believes that this is possibly alien and possibly a threat. It remains hypothetical because it can't be proven that it's an alien ship. But if it is an alien ship, then I think we're probably done in November. So now we're about to be invaded by fucking aliens now. So that's what's, that's what's going on now. This entire paper, it's 12 pages. It's essentially just a thought experiment on 3i Atlas was an alien spaceship. Uh, like what trajectories would it begin to take and what the ideal path it would take to get to Earth to destroy us. As a largely pedological exercise, in this paper we present additional analysis into the astrodynamics of 3i Atlas and hypothesize that this object could be technological and possibly hostile as would be expected from the dark forest resolution of the Fermi Paradox. The introduction starts pretty good, pretty scientific, staying, stating that um, if it turns out to be correct, and it turns out to be a hostile alien, um, then it would be dire for humanity. So that's pretty scientific there. It states the probability of it taking this path to be really low uh, based upon a sample size of three. And it doesn't tell you the sample size until the end because this isn't written for scientists that know. Like if you're studying this kind of stuff seriously, and this is like one of the papers that you have to read during the day to keep up to date on your field, you already know that your sample size of interstellar objects is only three, because we've only detected three, because it's 3i Atlas. It's the third interstellar object we've detected. 31 Atlas. Is that this paper isn't meant for the scientific community, because typically a lot of the people that would watch this aren't in the scientific community, which is fine. People don't understand that scientific papers are pretty much just meant for the scientific community to communicate with each other. So like these papers that he submitted, that these three authors submitted, is not for the community. This is purely for pop science popularity and to like put their name in the media. Because they know this is the kind of stuff that will get their name in the media. Because you're a Harvard professor, you know, you, you, you're you Harvard, you're an Ivy League saying that these aliens, or <laughs> that this object is an alien, hostile alien technology so people are going to listen to you because you abuse your authority i love this part in the conclusion at the heart of this is a question any self-respecting scientist will have to address at some point in their career is an outlier of a sample a consequence of expected random influction or is there ultimately a sound reason for its observed discrepancy? A sensible answer is to hinge largely on the size of the sample in question. It should be noted that for interstellar objects, we only have a sample size of three. Therefore, rendering an attempt to draw inferences from what is observed is rather problematic. It's frustrating that people read this thinking that it's like an actual scientific paper. It states in the conclusion that we strongly emphasize that this paper is largely a pedological exercise with, with interesting discoveries. But what discoveries did you make? There's nothing in here. It's all just conjecture. And then it also states that by far the most likely outcome will be that 3ILS is a completely natural interstellar object, probably a comet, and the author's await the astronomical data to support this likely origin. Nevertheless, when viewed from an open-minded and unprejudiced perspective, these investigators have revealed many compelling insights into the possibility that Thura Atlas is technological and more of the calculations presented here are useful even if the interstellar object ends up being a comet. 
like the other two that you said the exact same thing for. So as of right now, I have 133 subscribers, which is great. And while I am not at the level of a Harvard astrophysicist, I'm a PhD student, which still isn't much, obviously, compared to that. But there has to be a respect for the level of authority that you have no matter what. And when I was uh, tutoring, like uh, math and some low level physics courses, I still acknowledge that authority with one person. When you are saying something to someone in an environment which you are the authority for teaching, it is your responsibility to make it so you convey it accurately as to what you are teaching. And if they come out misunderstanding, that is most likely your fault. So it blows my mind that a 63 or 62 year old, I don't know how old he is, Harvard professor doesn't understand that the level of authority that they have is a point at which it can do damage to the community. Because it makes scientific communication hard if you have people that think we are being invaded by aliens. We haven't even learned if there's life outside of Earth yet. Honestly, I think that, um, oh, what's his name again? Avi Loeb. Avi Loeb is just a grifter. Wanted fame. I mean, he did the same thing with the Muamua, first interstellar object that we ever detected. He is doing it because, you know, open-mindedness. We gotta be open-minded in the scientific community. People aren't looking at the fact that it is a, it could, it could be an interstellar object. He's got to protect himself, you know? You got to state the scientific stuff behind it and say that, oh no, we, it likely, likely it's not uh, an alien spacecraft. But if it was, here's 12 pages that people can misconstrue and create tabloids on and damage the scientific community. And I don't know why Harvard is so chill with this, you must have tenure. This is what Harvard has. This is what you guys have. Really? You're just going to have some fucking quacks just just publishing garbage. Like who's no one's citing that unless you're a tabloid. What uh Avi Loeb. What Avi Loeb apparently doesn't understand about the scientific community or the scientific method is that is when we see something, we make observations and we collect data on it. And then from that data, we decide what it is. We don't, <laughs> we don't make up stories about what it is before we understand actually what it is. You could say hostile aliens, but you could, you could replace it with the tooth fairy is flying on it. And you could make this same paper just instead of hostile aliens in it, you just say the tooth fairy or Santa Claus or something. It's just not a helpful paper. It is not for anyone in the scientific community. It's depressing, you know? It's it's frustrating seeing people coming into my comment sections worried, because this was just like some cool detection we had a month ago, and now it is a sense of panic for people. And you are causing that panic. Avi Loeb. Like, you're not adding anything to the scientific enterprise. You're just causing panic for the general population that doesn't necessarily understand what you're doing in your paper. And that includes journalists and TikTokers that are bringing this conversation to people. So you have multiple layers of misunderstanding that you are causing. It's just incredibly frustrating that he is trying to pose himself as the open-minded and unprejudiced one in the scientific community when he's literally just a grifter. It's disappointing that people outside of the community, outside of the scientific community, can't see it, but it's not their fault. You live in a society that poses, you know, these Ivy Leagues to be at the top of their game and to be some of the most credible sources of information. And when they start telling you that aliens are invading, then you're going to have people panic. And you don't understand or respect your level of authority. Ivy Loeb, AV, AV Loeb. Avi Loeb. You're having the TikTokers go crazy. AI can't stop this. Apparently this is an alien object headed towards Earth right now. And it should be here in November. Researchers are calling it 31 Atlas. 31 Atlas. Apparently it's flying here at 130,000 miles per hour. 
31 at they're saying it could potentially be hostile and it should be here in november 31 atlas the tiktokers are insane the journalists are going crazy you're not adding anything you're you're making it worse you're making the scientific process harder you had these three authors spent this last month coming up with ways that this spacecraft who's paying for this What's who in the scientific community is paying for this? I mean, it's probably the government, but come on. You're cutting you're cutting health care and social services to fucking fund this garbage. What?